this is the critical moment when we will actually enable any connections to our firewall. We have done a few preparation steps, like adding the PKG files to the firewall. Now we need to enable AnyConnect, and we do that under AnyConnect connection profiles. All connections to the device, when it comes to AnyConnect, will hit one of these connection profiles we have down here. By default, we only have two connection profiles, default RA group and default WebVPN group. For AnyConnect connections, we will hit this default WebVPN group AnyConnect profile. We need to enable AnyConnect globally by checking the box Enable Cisco AnyConnect Client. This is the first step. Then we need to enable AnyConnect per interface. Normally, we only want to allow connections from the outside. So we allow SSL access on the outside by checking this box. And normally, we also allow DTLS. DTLS is a way to run SSL that is normally run over TCP443 to also be run over UDP443. That's good because UDP, which is connectionless, makes the traffic flow work quicker. We will have less handshake for UDP traffic than we have in the TCP traffic. And since everything is probably handshake within the tunnel anyway, we normally do not need to run TCP443. By enabling DTLS, which I recommend, you will allow the clients to use UDP443 and use TCP as a fallback. That means that when an AnyConnect client connects to the head-end device and we have enabled DTLS, it will try to run 443 TLS over UDP. The client might be behind a firewall that filters this out, and if the client senses that it cannot reach the head-end device with UDP443, it will fall back to normal TLS that is using TCP443. First of all, it will try to use UDP, and if it cannot, it will fall back to TCP. We normally enable DTLS because it's a good thing. To avoid certificate errors, we need to set up certificates in the device for SSL. We use this button to do that, but I will skip that right now, and we will get certificate warnings in this course when I show you how AnyConnect works. But in real implementations, we do not want certificate errors on AnyConnect clients, so we need AnyConnect SSL certificates. And I will show you that in another video. Right now, we skip that. We have enabled AnyConnect globally. We have allowed it on the outside and DTLS as well. IGV2 is for running IPsec with AnyConnect, which is normally not recommended, so we skip that. This is by default a checked bypass interface access list for inbound VPS sessions. This is a good idea to keep checked. This checkbox means that the inbound traffic from the clients will bypass the access list on the outside interface. We do not need to allow VPN traffic in the access list of the outside interface. I will show you later how we can filter traffic anyway for VPN with the VPN filters. But in most situations, we want to keep that box checked. Further down, we can see here that we have a default web VPN group. On that, we need to enable SSL. When doing that, we always get a confusing warning telling us that we need to enable that default RA group as well. So we select yes here. That means that both these two boxes are checked. If we want to, we can uncheck IPsec for both of them because we normally do not want to run IPsec VPN clients anyway. Clients hitting this box with any connect client will automatically go into the connection profile default web VPN group, which is this one here. By default, the authentication method for these clients are using the local user database. This is the same database as for management. Right now, we have created a user with the name Cisco and password Cisco, and we will initially use that username and password to log into the firewall. We also see that we have the default group policy is the only policy created by default. And we can change that and we can create other group policies as well. But by default, it will hit the default group policy. If I go into the connection profile, I can see here that I have selected AAA local by default. The mandatory setting to do here is to create an address pool. We need to tell which client addresses that we should use the IP addresses that each VPN client should be assigned when connecting. I want to create a VPN pool called VPN pool with a start address of 10.0.99.1, 10.0.99.200.
and then subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. I created a VPN pool. Critical step. Now you have created it. You need to check the assign to add that to what we have just created. So we need to select it as well. Otherwise, this box will still be empty. Now we have selected a VPN pool called VPN pool. We can also have a look at the default group policy by checking the manage box here and edit. And we can see here that we can also here as well select an address pool. I actually recommend that we do that here as well because it's less confusing if we have specified the VPN pool both as the connection profile and on the group policy. So we add the VPN pool here as well. And down here are a lot of settings that we will have a look at later on. For now, we only want to add DNS servers. So when the user connects and gets an IP address from the firewall, it will also get DNS servers. Normally these DNS servers are internal servers, like our internal Active Directory server 10.0.0.100 that will be handed out to the client. And we do apply. We can see that this is what is being sent to the firewall. We create an address pool. Actually here we cannot see that address pool is created. We will send them so we will verify once more. I will do a refresh. Oh, it didn't make those changes. Let's do that again. Enable, 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 and enable. I guess I did too much changes at the same time. So we send these and we have enabled it globally. I go into the connection profile and the client pool is not even created here. I guess I did a mistake here. VPN pool in 099.100. Sometimes this happens because ASDM can be a bit confused if you do too many changes at the same time in different places before sending them to the device. So I recommend you, if you do a lot of changes, do some changes, send them and apply them to the device before doing the rest of the changes. Okay, we apply it. We go into the group policy as well to have a look at the VPN pool in the group policy because I have a feeling that it was not selected here. It's already created, we assign it. So there is an address pool, VPN pool for the default group policy. Then we apply that as well. So now we have globally enabled AnyConnect and made the most critical and mandatory settings to make the AnyConnect client able to connect to the headed device.